Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Secondary Heroes podcast. It's time for Secondary Shorts, our weekly check on what we're watching and what's trending in pop culture. It's October 1st, 2020, and this is your host, Trevor. Joining me as usual is... Hey, guys, it's Prague. Hey, this is Josh. It's the spoopy time of season. This is DeLorean Wolfgang. Awesome. It is. It's October. Finally, fall is here. It doesn't Not feel that way. It's pretty warm. Is it October, but it's a full moon. Oh, my God. Dude, I just walked outside, and it's super red right now, too. It would be. Well, the fire's here in California. Yeah, that's the fire. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God, that's terrible. It's like, oh, it's kind of cool. It's all red. Wait. Oh, wait. That's right. Oh, what the, a beautiful, fiery having. red moon. Oh. It's a blood moon. It's okay, because conveniently enough, this year with coronavirus, October 31st was set to be a full moon and a Saturday for an amazing Halloween. And, of course, yeah. oh, my God, we can't do right. anything. <laughs> That's the most 2020 thing to happen right there. That pretty much is. <laughs> oh, man. That's a bummer. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, well, actually, speaking of moons, uh, I, why don't I just start uh, this conversation moon? tonight? Um, so there's a show that I really want to watch. I haven't started watching it, but it's on my list, and it's called uh, Cosmos Possible Worlds. Have you guys watched this at all yet? Is, it like yeah, the is this a Netflix that show? Cosmos show? It by- is. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, it a is. sequel okay. to Cosmos. Okay. But so they wanted to kind of expand on it and just show just kind of other worlds that could possibly be either in our solar system or even our galaxy and what kind of animals could possibly live on those hmm. uh on those planets, which is really cool because Stephen Hawking back in I want to say the early 2000s had a show just like it where he kind of like he imagined what kind of an- or what kind of aliens would live on certain planets like for instance Jupiter is a giant gas planet he was thinking well or so Jupiter like or Saturn he was mm-hmm. thinking there could be like giant jellyfish type of aliens huh. that just kind of float around in the sky like and just- rebels Oh, is that really? They show up in oh. the season finale of Rebels. <laughs> no way. Oh, now I'm going to have to watch that because that actually sounds kind of cool. Also a lot like Metroid as well. So there's that. Well, but, oh, cool. but they're like tentac- the this, is the, this is like skyscraper sized jellyfish, not Epic. like jellyfish right. that jump on your head and suck gotcha. your brains. Okay. Wow. Brains. <laughs> That's that time of year. <laughs> so uh yeah so i'm looking forward to it i i watched all of uh cosmos really anything that neil degrasse tyson does i'm kind of watching it because uh i love that guy and he's awesome so Some cool concepts I can... that's for sure yeah yeah, yeah. i remember but... watching the first episode of it and I was, it was too dark of a period for me to watch it because once you start talking, it's been 13.4 billion years of the universe and you realize that you're at most here for a hundred years. But then yeah. luckily I've aged enough. You realize how awesome that is of all the connections you make in those hundred years and how random and long odds there are. Yes. It actually exists exactly. during this small minuscule period of time you uh, know these are the conversations i love to have after a couple drinks <laughs> <laughs> it's so true i mean the fact that we're all here and we're able to talk across airwaves i mean if you're on Invisible wi-fi right airwaves. now you know, and then Crackle we're airwaves. broadcasting this across airwaves as well so people are listening to us from wherever it's right. kind of wild that like we're just a little speck in this gigantic universe and I, I don't know, it's just, it, it, it blows my mind. There's actually oh, a sure. video on YouTube, if you really want to feel small, uh, it pretty much shows, do. well, ha <laughs> 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 um, It actually shows, uh, oh God, what is it? Uh, what happens after we're all dead and gone? What's happening to the universe? And I mean, it's wow. just going to turn into one gigantic black hole. And yeah. that's pretty much what's and who knows maybe it'll implode on itself and turn into another big bang but this is this is trillions upon quadrillions of billions of mile or miles uh years away but man it makes you feel tiny it really does but i love this stuff and i love talking about it so well that's anyways. like those fun videos where it starts out with the planet earth and then it shows yes. you the scale of all our planets yeah. and the suns and those suns and then we're in the little yep. part of the ex- branch of milky way and that's just one galaxy and we zoom out of the, all the billions of galaxies it's fun 
Well, and there's a really cool video too of a, because right now scientists have learned that there's another galaxy heading our way. We'll never see it in our lifetime and our grandkids and great grandkids will never see it in their time. Not with that attitude. (laughs) No, come on, you never know. They might develop technology to keep them alive. Trevor. (laughs) Uh, It's true, but it's, it's kind of cool, but, uh, but they did like a, a scene, like looking from Chicago, looking out across the night sky and you can see uh, like what's going to happen in a billion years, how close this galaxy is going to be. And the galaxy is going to be clear as day, like gorgeous, a big spiral in our sky. But that's billions of, I keep wanting to say billions of miles, but billions <laughs> of years away. Planet X is coming. Yes. Anyways, Great. sorry. We talk like about it. blood moon and all of a sudden I'm like, yes, let's talk about science. <laughs> let's do it. Science. Science up in this bitch. Let's do it. I like it. <laughs> cool. So that's what I've been watching. How about you guys? Or what I'm going to watch? <laughs> oh. It's all right. You'll get there. What about you, Josh? Uh, so a friend at work, I guess they, I don't know if they listen to the podcast, but they recommended, they said, Hey, Josh, have you seen Utopia on Amazon yet? I said, No, I haven't. They, they started talking to me about it. I was like, Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So I watched the first episode and I'm pretty intrigued. Okay. And this is about a group of kids, or I won't say a bunch of kids, a group of, of young adults. Yeah, I can uh, see the picture behind you. Okay. Yeah, that are, they're, they're uh, a part of, they're kind of like how us con people are. We kind of, we know each other online, but we don't know each other, we know a lot of we don't know each other in person. Uh, mm-hmm. So what they did is that, oh, they meet at a con and they have uh, this, this whole thing that they're about is it's called Utopia which is kind of like a graphic novel, but they see it more how the things that talk about more realistic and they tell the future, but people just see it as a graphic novel. So these, this group of people, they look into it that much to where they're figuring out this is telling the future somehow. Ah, so, well, so they're reading this book thinking that like, most people think it is just fiction, it's silly, yeah. but not these guys. Yeah, Great. they see it as, ah. as so. Now so I'm going to have to watch yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch it. So uh, they had some good points in there to where I don't want to say it's too much curious. about it. All right. they, they point out to a group of people that just see it as, as, as fiction. Sure. And they're like, oh, this, this represents this, represents that. And then people just, you know, ignore them. But anyways, uh, I like it just because it's almost like a Stranger Things type of feel with them okay. in, in regards to a group of kids or people going on an adventure, figuring things out. But uh, it is a little graphic. Well, then it's Amazon. So, I mean, they have the boys on there. So mm-hmm. it kind of has that same feel as well. So, okay. Uh, nice. Yeah, if, you haven't, is that, if you haven't seen it, I recommend at least starting it uh, and give it a shot. Well, Amazon is pushing it like crazy on my, uh, every time that I turn on my fire stick, it's like, watch Utopia. Yeah. Nice. And it's good. It's real good. Okay. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't seen the advertisements, but a friend of the show, Jimmy, actually recommended it to me this morning. So I will what? probably be checking it out. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Jimmy, if you're listening, how dare you text Prague before you text me? You were my he knows best I like man. His stuff. He's you my were dealer. my best man at my wedding, and you're texting Prague? Not anymore. See, it's you over. really f- fall through with that best friend thing that we talked about. So which best friend... Who is your best friend, Jimmy? Is it Prague or is it Alex? Yeah. Wow. What's going on, wow. Jimmy? You're causing friction in this group here. Well, I speaking want you, of. I want you to go to anchor.fm and send us a voice message. <laughs> Don't do that, Jimmy. There's no, there's no need to stir up more, more of this. Um, but based on another one of his recommendations, I did, I did dig into another show um, that was like a web series called The Booth at the End, which is the picture behind me here. Um, it's a show I had never heard of. Um, probably most people haven't because it really was just like this web-based show that existed, I believe, in Canada. And they only aired it on a thing called City TV or something. Um, two seasons of it, uh, quirky as heck. The only way I was able to find it was on YouTube. So it's very, um, it's, not, it's not easy to watch because of the, I guess, whoever ripped it off of whatever website. Um, Anyways, I, I got through it and uh, the first two episodes, and it's very intriguing. It's different because 
the show is just at the booth. It doesn't exist anywhere else. There's no other scenes anywhere else. It's just that guy behind me played by uh, Xander Berkeley. Um, he has people come in and um, sit down. <laughs> and, uh, Berkeley. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Oh my. Uh... That was fun. Um, basically they go, go to him looking for an answer to something they need or want, right? They say, Hey, we hear that you can provide me with whatever I desire, whatever it is that you can perform miracles. Like, well, I can, I can do this for you. Like, I don't actually do it, but I can tell you how you can do it. And they go, fine, I'll do whatever you want. And he tells them lots oh. of crazy things to do. And of course, some of them are like, there's no way I can pull off that or do that or commit to that. Or there's a lot whatever. of VHS like, tapes that go like that too. Okay. <laughs> right it's like uh, it, it's very creepy it's very disturbing and it is yeah it's very i don't know it's in my it's my it's my kind of wheelhouse it's that kind of stuff like well, what if like what if you could say bring back a dead loved one or stop your son from having cancer if you blew up a building full of kids or but um, is this the, the bank or is this kind of like the bedazzled thing like yeah, you thinking. make your you make your wish and then like something happens yeah something else happens you you would think that at first based on the premise right because it has that kind of feel but then the second episode happens and it puts a twist on the whole thing so mm. not what a twist but it's fun but first <laughs> it's a twist. Nice. so every every it seems like every episode has a new twist on the one before it like oh that's what happens after they do this or don't do that you know what's the ramifications of this if they don't or do do or don't do that um so it's kind of it's very intriguing um i don't know if it's for everybody but i'm someone who is fine watching two people talk you know at a table <laughs> like that that's fine with me i like dialogue and i like characters so um it was something that um i actually kind of enjoyed and i can't wait to finish it up it's only two seasons so it's not that long you're only two seasons the booth at the end okay well speaking of characters and dialogue and development I got back into watching Killing Eve because yeah. I watched season one. It's outstanding. And so season two, I think season three is already out, but I'm on season two right now. And just Sandro and Jodie Comer do an amazing job of, if you've never heard of the show, it's about essentially a female assassin who's Jodie Comer. And then Sandra Oh is the police detective, the MI6 agent tasked with kind of tracking her down. And they create this really, probably the most peculiar relationship of that I've seen where it's a really delicate balance of what love actually means. And just, there's really dive deep into those characters. Well, she still gets to pull off awesome assassin work in the meantime. And those are always fun. Cause she's a bit of a showman when she wants to kill somebody, it's not going to be like as stealthy as it possibly could. It's more about making it the biggest draw possible. And so those are always nice, fun juxtapositions against really, insight into different psyches you gotta Very get nice. that kill of the week <laughs> kill of the week yeah i've heard about this show and i didn't really know much about it other than sandra O oh was in it um and she's a great actress so i was like it's something that's been in my mind to watch eventually but it sounds like it actually was really worth my time it's outstanding nice. okay. and it's on hulu right now if you don't have bbc or anything like that okay nice so it's so is it a it is a bbc show though yeah Nice. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Cool. Awesome. So I know that we've got some uh, news came out about uh, live action Spider Verse. Yeah. Yeah. We just tweeted that out. <laughs> it's interesting because of all the potential things you could connect from anything that isn't the MCU of old Spider Man, I think Jamie Foxx as Electro is at the very bottom of the list of things you're yeah, going to bring back of everything they've ever <laughs> done. <laughs> but that's it what was they're like doing. They, it's like they had a dart and they threw it at the board and I was like shoot it went over there <laughs> all right well <laughs> what happens ah, but you combine this it. with jk simmons as j jonah jameson and you have uh, peter parker's actual identity revealed at the end of far from home they yep. they once they sign on andrew garfield or Tony mcguire they can do combine all the movie universes together within the confines of the MCU and create an actual live action Spider-Verse. And then since Vulture is with the Morbius trailer, you can then tie that in and you can set up a whole Sinister Six. They're building a whole Spider-Verse. Sony and MCU are finally working together. 
Nice. Seems like it, yeah. And it seems like they're That's trying to awesome. rectify it. Hopefully, they're trying to rectify that character because it didn't work out the first time he was on screen. Yeah. So hopefully they do something to him so it's not making. Are you talking about Electra? Yeah. yeah, Electra. It was okay. Just oof. Oof. <laughs> the best villain. I. Yeah. But again, that Spider-Man wasn't the best Spider-Man, anyways. Yeah. It might have been the worst. Amazing Spider-Man might've... too. Who would you guys <laughs> cast might've, for might've like uh, Miles Morales <laughs> if they were gonna throw him in there? Ooh, uh, I've thought some... about this a lot, and I'd rather have an unknown. Yeah, some nobody that yeah. you've never heard of. Yeah, it's their I first role. That'd be great. I mean, I mean, I don't know if Tom Holland was not known, but I didn't really know who the hell he was before he was part of me. He's great. So That's true. It would be nice That's to have true. him. I didn't, didn't even know who he was. Yeah, I think it works well when, they, when they're able to do that with the MCU. Like, yeah, there's some roles that are a little bit bigger that you can maybe sometimes do it, but I think it's nice once in a while to find somebody that people aren't like, oh, but I know that person from this. So I'm always going to see them as this other character. Right. They don't want that. They want you to be like, no, this is Iron Man. This is Thor. This is Spider-Man, period. Do not think I, of I will else. say if they do decide to bring in any kind of black noir Spider-Man, yeah. I would love for them to stay with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, that would be he fine. Could yeah. off he could fine. easily yeah. pull it off. <laughs> He'd be hidden anyways the whole time, so you probably wouldn't even know. He's All you got to do is listen to hear his voice. His voice yeah. is perfect for that Spider-Man. It was fun. That was a good role for him. That's for sure. Very just yeah, don't give them the bees do not the bees <laughs> sorry it's i shouldn't be yelling also, my baby's sleeping <laughs> in the same week of that news you do have sony updating the ps4 or 5 version of spider-man Forgot about and that. they redesigned the the playstation version of peter parker to look like tom holland and it's like <laughs> such a terrible decision <laughs> show is awkward that. it doesn't make any sense uh, they're trying to cater to the fan base they thought they didn't realize that that's not what they wanted no spider like, P- oh. peter parker is a different or playstation they peter parker is a different versions of the, yeah, game. It's a different one. the ps the original one and then the remastered so you could have both characters yeah oh but interesting yeah but since you did mention kind of first time actors appearing in the mcu there's a new uh, Miss Marvel show coming to Disney Plus, and they finally cast Kamala Khan. She's going to be, her name is Iman Vellani, and this is her first role. And she's just going to, I mean, this is a big deal to cast people who are actually based on who the character is rather than, you know, whitewashing Hollywood and stuff. So this is exactly. a great casting by Disney. Disney's doing a really good job lately of that. And to tie that further out into the MCU to show representation of everybody can be superheroes. So, yeah. I mean, already Miss Marvel's an awesome character. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know who she is because she's only really been relegated to the comics. Like, there was more attention given to her with the Avengers game where she's one of the additional characters. And so now to have her actually in a show on Disney Plus will hopefully introduce a lot more people to her character. And I like the idea that they're doing it as a show instead of a movie because if you've actually read her in the comic books, like, the way that she's written, like, all of her little moments feel like fun kind of dramedy comedy beats you know it's like really well done in the comic if you've read it um so it'd be fun to see that played out in a tv show versus say cramming it all into a movie and not only that you a movie's so tough because it needs so like it really needs to be a success you know Mm -hmm. disney plus Mm -hmm. show they can kind of experiment and just be like let's see how it does and then you have the all the benefit of being a tv show and character development versus here's two hours we need to introduce who they are and then give them something to deal with you don't have enough time to really develop who they are yeah Yeah, it gets tired after a while (laughs) same thing all right origin story for the first part okay villain done okay yeah (laughs) superhero movie so yeah i'm excited some decent new interesting and fun news this week in the mcu yeah Gosh. for real i dig it well at that i should probably do a podcast of the week Ooh, and because be we are looking at october of spoopy time my podcast is called haunted places uh <laughs> haunted places it's the it's hosted by a guy named greg polson and this guy's voice is spot on for radio like when you listen to him wow like you're you're put in the scene it's pretty wild so what they do is they actually they take old stories that they've kind of heard 
like through you know old ghost stories and stuff of haunted places around the u.s and around the world and then they'll kind of like create a story around that to kind of give it more life and they add a lot of sound effects it's pretty wild man it's really good and it's crazy like there's some stories that like have stuck with me now and there's a lot of places that actually i want to go visit now because of this so check out haunted places it's it's a lot of fun awesome and be sure to follow all of our buddies all of our podcast friends like geek together and the four dorksmen and the average nerd podcast and talking pops and nerdy curious and all our fun friends that hopefully you've seen us w interact with them of our various virtual cons and then whatever your favorite social media platform is follow at secondary heroes find out when our new That's podcasts right. drop our fun <laughs> news throughout the week and to everyone listening we hope you enjoyed and we'll talk to you next time Rock out. see ya it's the Lorraine Wolfgang roll out